a very complicated motion, which I can hardly imagine what it's like. It is a point that's going to move around in space. And it is this point, P. This point, P, is going to move around in space. And I call this vector OP. I call that now vector R. And I give it a sub-index T, which indicates it's changing with time. I call this location A of Y. I'm going to call that Y of T. It's changing with time. I call this X of T. It's going to change with time. And I call this point Z of T, which is going to change with time, because point P is going to move. And so I'm going to write down the vector R in its most general form that I can do that, R, which changes with time, is now x of t, which is the same as a of x there before, times x roof, plus y of t, y roof, plus z of t, z roof. I have decomposed my vector R into three independent vectors. Each one of those change with time. What is the velocity of this particle? Well, the velocity is the first derivative of the position. So that is dr dt. So there we go. First the derivative of this one, which is dx dt x roof. I'm going to write for dx dt x dot, because I'm lazy. And I'm going to write for d2x dt squared x double dot. It's often done, but not in your book. But it's a notation that I will often use, because otherwise the equations look so clumsy. Plus y dot times y roof, plus z dot times z roof. So z dot is the z dt. What is the acceleration as a function of time? Well, the acceleration as a function of time equals dv dt. So that's the second derivative of x versus time. And so that becomes x double dot times x roof plus y double dot times y roof plus z double dot times z roof. And look what we have now accomplished. It looks like minor, but it's going to be big later on. We have a point P going in three-dimensional space. And here, we have the entire behavior of the object as it moves its projection along the x-axis. This is the position, this is its velocity, and this is its acceleration. And here, you see the entire behavior on the z-axis. This is the position on the z-axis, this is the velocity component in the z-direction, and this is the acceleration in the z-axis. And here you have the y. In other words, we have now a three-dimensional motion. We have cut into three one-dimensional motions. This is a one-dimensional motion. This is a behavior only along the x-axis, and this is a behavior only along the y-axis, and this is a behavior only along the z-axis, and the three together make up the actual motion of that particle. 